Hello, my name is Lance Williams. I'm glad to be back with you. Today I want to talk to you about speaking in tongues. We've been talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Spirit and with, with power, being baptized in fire. And today I want to talk to you about tongues, and that is the initial sign of someone being filled with the Spirit. Now I certainly believe from the scriptures that you can be filled with the Spirit and not pray in tongues, but why would you want to do that? I mean, praying in tongues is like turning on a switch. It's just like keeping you charged up. Like, just like keeping a battery on a car charged up. Praying in tongue, tongues keeps you charged up spiritually. It's a powerful, powerful gift that God has given us. And so that's what I want to talk to you about. And if you missed the other messages, I encourage you to go back and listen to it because you can't pray in tongues unless you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. And this, that's a separate experience from salvation. There's salvation where you get sealed, your spirit gets sealed with the Holy Spirit. But then there's a separate experience that I showed you from the book of Acts. It is a separate experience. And it's, it's I explained the difference of, you know, it's, it's one thing for the Holy Spirit to be in you, but it is another thing for you to be in the Holy Spirit. It's just like when, we, when we're saved, the Bible talks about there's a well of, of water springing up in us, a well of life. But then when we're filled with the Spirit, it talks about rivers of living water. And that was in reference to being baptized with the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you to go check out those teachings. Because I'll tell you what, this has changed my life probably more than anything else. Uh, it's, I mean, obviously salvation is, is the most important thing. We need to receive Christ. And that's another thing. You can't receive the Holy Spirit unless you first received the Lord Jesus in your life, unless you've first been saved. But salvation is the most important. But as far as what's changed my daily life and changed my lifestyle the most, it has been being filled with the Holy Spirit. It is a powerful, powerful, powerful experience that I believe God wants all of, us to, all of us to have. And so the initial sign is praying in tongues. And there's so many, so many great things by praying in tongues. I mean, there's times, you know, I want to pray to God and I just, you know, before I, before I spoke in tongues, times I wanted to pray to God and just didn't, didn't know what to pray. Well, praise God, now I have tongues, and, and I can pray in English. And when I don't know what else to pray, I can just pray in tongues. And a lot of times I'll pray in tongues, and then I'll pray in English. Because I believe it influences my, my prayer, it influences my mind. So I want to just ask you some questions today. And obviously it's virtual, and you can feel free to leave the comments uh, what you think. But I just want to ask you some questions and then we'll go into it. Uh, what I was saying is I obviously can't hear you, but feel free to write in the comments, and then we'll go through this together. So the first question I have for you is, what great benefit is received by praying in tongues or otherwise known as praying in the Holy Ghost or praying in the Holy Spirit? What benefit does it have to you? Well, one of the benefits, let's go to Jude chapter 1, verse 20. There's only one chapter in Jude. And we'll see what a benefit of praying in tongues is. I'll give you a second to get there. Jude chapter 1, verse 20 says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. It says that you build yourself up on your most holy faith. See, when you pray in tongues, it's now there's a there's a difference between there's a difference between a personal tongue and a tongue in the church. There's a difference, and see, a lot of people, they get confused on tongues because they just think of, 
the gift of tongues. And that God doesn't give that gift to everybody because it does say in the Bible that it talks about different gifts and different like there's prophets and teachers and then there's there's gift of miracles and healings and and it talks about that not everyone has every gift. And so a lot of people think that not everybody is capable of praying in tongues. Well, I would agree with that if you're talking about the gift of tongues. I don't believe that everyone has the gift of tongues in a church service uh, in, the, in that standpoint. But the scripture is very clear, and it shows us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we may talk about this more later, but it talks about it talks about that the uh, let's see where was I going? I lost my train of thought. It talks about there's it shows from First Corinthians fourteen that there is a tongue in the church and there is a personal private tongue. And again, we'll talk more about that later. But right here. It says you build yourself up on your most holy faith. And so there is a personal tongue that we all can have. We all can be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. It's not just for some. It's not just for the super saints, so to speak. All of us can be filled. All of us can receive the Holy Spirit. And as I, I've already mentioned going through the book of Acts, that he told them not to do anything until you first receive the Holy Spirit. And it's the same for us. We need to receive the Holy Spirit. And when we do that, we are empowered to be a witness to the ends of the earth, is what it says in, in Acts chapter 1. We are empowered. We are empowered to be a witness. We're empowered for ministry. And that doesn't mean just people in full-time ministry. We're all called to be ministers of the gospel. We're all called to, to be a living epistle read of men, is what the scriptures say. But to do that, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you need to pray in tongues and build yourself up on your most holy faith. It, it builds you up spiritually is what it does. It talks about in Corinthians that when we pray in tongues, 1 Corinthians 14, when we pray in tongues, we edify ourselves. And if you look up that word edify, it literally means to build up or to charge up. And that's why I used the illustration a while ago about like a car battery, because that's what it means. It means to keep us charged up. Keep us charged up spiritually so that we're ready to be a witness at any and all times. So through this, we can, through praying in tongues, we build ourselves up on our, on our most holy faith because I'll tell you, it takes faith. It takes faith to pray in tongues. When you're praying in this other language and you don't know what you're saying, it, it builds you up spiritually. And 1 Corinthians 14 also talks about praying the mysteries of God. It's, it's a powerful, powerful tool. The second thing it says here, in verse 21, it says, keeping yourselves in the love of God. Now, God loves us all. He loves you even if you're not walking with Him. He loves you when you mess up, when you sin, when you fail. But there's a difference from Him loving you and you walking in the path of His love. See, if you go live in sin, and see, so you're just living a sinful life, then God still loves you, but you're not walking in His love. You're not walking in the path that He has laid out for you. And so when we pray in tongues, it char charges us up spiritually, but then it helps us to walk in the path that God has laid out for us. Because many of us have experienced things that God never intended for us to experience. I know with drug use and things that, that I used to do, it opened me up to a demonic realm. And I experienced things, I saw things, I heard things that God never intended for me to experience those things. 
Now, he can certainly use that, and he has, and he is. He can use what I've been through, but there's things, so many things in my life that God never intended that for me. And see, now that I, I pray in tongues on a daily basis, it, it helps to keep me in that, that path of love. It helps to keep me in the love of God. And since I've been filled with the Holy Spirit and been praying in tongues on a daily basis, it's hard for me to sin. I mean, I don't, I don't live perfectly like anyone else. But when I sin, I know it. it. It grieves the Spirit in me. And one of those reasons is because I pray in tongues on a daily basis and it keeps me in that love of God. And when I just take a step outside of that love, outside of that path of love that He's laid out for me, it grieves the Spirit in me. And so then I know to step back in. And it makes me to where I, I don't want to sin. And again, it's a, it's a powerful, powerful weapon. So building yourself up on your most holy faith and keeping you in the love of God. The second question I have for you is how many people were filled with the Holy Spirit? Now we're talking about in the book of Acts. It talks about how many people were filled with the Holy Spirit? When the Holy Spirit was initially poured out, how many there were filled? And then also, I want to tie the third question to this, because it's in the same passage. It says, what did they do as a result of being filled? We already really talked about that one, but we'll go over it again. So let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Acts 2, 4. I'm just going to start in verse 1 and read the paragraph. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak, to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. So we just read it. How many were filled with the Holy Spirit in this setting? It says in verse 4, the first part of verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. So they were all filled and they all spoke in tongues. Folks, I'm telling you, it's the same for us today. Now, obviously, not everyone's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit because not everyone wants to. Not everyone chooses to. Not everyone believes. But for you and I, the believers, the disciples, the ones who walk with the Lord Jesus, He desires for all of us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak with other tongues. He desires that for you. And if, he's desire, if He desires that for you, then... If he desires that for you and I, then who are we to say no to what God has given us? Who are we to reject the gift of God? Who are we to reject the love and mercy and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, we certainly can if we want to, but it's not smart. Because God is a good God. He wants the best for you and I. And he's given us such a powerful weapon right here. But sadly, a lot of people have listened to wrong teachings on this. And, and people, because they don't understand it, they, uh, they dismiss it or they downplay it. Or people even ascribe it to the devil, which I would say that's blasphemy. Because blasphemy is, a, is ascribing uh, to the devil something that's holy. Like saying... Uh, uh, you know, if something's holy, saying, oh, that's of the devil. That's what Jesus said was blasphemy in the Gospels. Uh, so when people say tongues are of the devil, I, you know, I, I believe there's mercy for a lot of those people because they do it in ignorance. 
Uh, but that's, uh, that's certainly a wicked thing to call that, to call evil good and good evil. So it says, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They all spoke with tongues. And another point I want to point out here is, it says, they spoke, and it says right here in verse 4, and the Spirit gave the utterance. Now, one time in my life, I thought that the, if I got filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would just overtake me and, and overtake my mouth and make me speak in tongues. And that hindered me when I first, you know, got filled with the Holy Spirit. And it hinders a lot of people. But God is not just going to overtake your mouth and tongue and just make you speak in tongues. No. You speak and the Spirit gives the utterance. You have to speak. You have to get your mouth moving and the Spirit will give the utterance. So let's see here. Let's go. So the next question I have for you. When a person prays in an unknown tongue, do people understand what is being said? Want to tie another one here? Tie in another question here. When you pray in an unknown tongue, your spirit is speaking what? So again, do people understand what's being said? And what is your spirit speaking when you're praying in tongues? Well, let's go to 1 Corinthians 14.2. First Corinthians fourteen two it says for one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men but to God. For no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the spirit. So the first question was Do people understand what is being said? So again, for one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God. So no. Now, in a church setting, there must be an interpreter. Otherwise, what, what good would it do? How would it benefit the church if, if someone is praying in tongues out loud and no one knows what's being said? So there must be an interpreter in the church. But as far as a personal, private prayer language, as far as your personal tongue, you can pray to interpret. Paul says that later in this chapter. But you don't have to. You can pray in tongues, tongues, build yourself up on your most holy faith, edify yourself, and you don't have to understand what's being said. Now, I do think there's benefit in praying for the interpretation, and this is an area that I'm still growing in, is praying in tongues and then praying for the interpretation. But you don't have to know what's being said. And then uh, the second question was, what is your spirit speaking so it says in the second, uh, oh, let's see, hang on. So, one who speaks in tongues speaks not to men but to God, for no one understands him. It says right there, no one understands him. But he utters mysteries in the Spirit. So there's the answer to the second part of that question. What is your Spirit speaking when you pray in tongues? You're speaking the mysteries of God. You're speaking the, the, the secret things of God that, that are hidden, not from us, but for us. We're speaking mysteries in the Spirit. And then I believe when we pray that we can interpret our own tongue, we can interpret those mysteries and receive revelation knowledge. Next question. When you pray in tongues, you do what? When you pray in tongues, you do what? Well, let's stay there in 1 Corinthians 14. Go to verse 4. And we've already really talked about this. But the one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself. The one who speaks in a tongue builds up, him, up himself. And it goes on to talk about he who prophesies builds up the church. And that's, you know, if you read this chapter... He's talking about uh, he's talking about tongues and prophecy, and he talks about how prophecy edifies the church and tongues edifies the individual. And he's talking about it's better to prophesy. And the reason he says that is because if if we're just if we're just praying in tongues, 
we're building up ourselves, and that's great. That is, that's really great, but it doesn't need to stop there. We need to also be building up other believers. And see, if we're just focused on ourselves, that's not, that's not a good thing. We become self-centered. But he said, I wish that you prophesy so that we can build up other people, build up the body of Christ. But it's also certainly important that we build ourselves up so that we can build up others. So the one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself. We've already talked about that. Keeping yourself charged up. And then the, the next question is, when you pray in tongues, you are doing what? And I know it's similar to the one we just said, but this is a different scripture. 1 Corinthians 14, 16. Fourteen sixteen. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit... How can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen as to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? And again, we've, we've talked about this a little bit as well. But one thing I want to point out is, and it's, it's not as clear in this. I'm using the English Standard Version. I think it's a very good translation. But it says otherwise... If you give thanks with your spirit. So it's talking about here giving thanks with your spirit. Other translations say that when in the same verse it, it translates it that when we pray in tongues, we give thanks well. We give thanks well. And then this is certainly saying here, we are giving thanks with our spirit. So when we're praying in tongues, we're not only speaking the mysteries of God, but we're expressing gratitude toward God. Our spirit is expressing gratitude toward God. So we're praying thanksgiving and blessing when we pray in tongues. That is powerful. That is powerful. And this has certainly transformed my life. It's transformed my life. I pray in tongues on, on a daily basis. And since I got filled with the Spirit, it was... Actually, it's coming up, my, I call it my Holy Ghost birthday, but it was December 6, 2015, that I got filled with the Holy Spirit. Right after I got filled, I remember, well, I remember hearing about the Holy Spirit, and then I was at a church service, December 6, 2015, and someone after the service made a, a call for salvation and the Holy Spirit, and being filled with the Holy Spirit, and I went up there and got filled with the Holy Spirit. I didn't pray in tongues right then. But I remember I received the Holy Spirit and I was still smoking cigarettes at the time and praise God that I've been cleaned up of that. I no longer smoke. But I went outside to smoke a cigarette after that. I remember I was smoking this cigarette and I remember it's like a slight fog was lifted off me. I mean, literally, the trees got a little greener, the sky got a little bluer. It's like things literally had more color to them. And that was, that was physically and then internally with my heart, with my mind, with my understanding. I, I started, I developed a love for the Word that I'd never had before. I, de I developed a craving for the Word like my food. Like we desire food, I started desiring the Word the same. And then I started getting revelation from the Word. I started seeing things in the Word that I never saw before. So what that, that physical... Uh, thing that I had or things literally had more color to them it was like symbolic of what happened internally because I started seeing things in the scriptures and with God that I never saw before and it's just transformed my relationship with God it's transformed my life and I've prayed in tongues nearly every day since then there may have been some days here and there that that I hadn't just for being busy or whatever but most every day I pray in tongues. Whether it's driving or whether, you know, I like to get up in the morning uh, before things get going, before my job starts and things like that, and I'll pray in tongues. And I just spend time throughout the day praying in my understanding, praying in English, and, and also praying in tongues. And I keep myself charged up and keep myself in the love of God, as we talked about. 
And it is so, so powerful. And I already realize how powerful it is. But in my spirit, I know that it's even more powerful than what I even understand it to be right now. And I'm believing for more revelation on this. Because again, I already recognize that it is powerful. But I think it's even so much more than what I even recognize. And I'm believing for revelation on that, that I will understand really how powerful tongues really is. And some of you have heard my testimony when I got delivered of demons. And I, I don't want to go into that right now, but part of my deliverance, I mean, this when this demon manifested in me, the strength of man was no match for this beast in me. And again, I don't want to go into detail right now. I don't, I don't have the time for that right now. I need to keep this to a certain time limit. But just quickly, it, the man, man could not hold me down when this beast was manifesting. But when the church circled around me and they started praying in tongues over me, this beast in me lost all of its strength. This demon in me lost all of its strength. Couldn't even, I couldn't even stand up. And it, it ushered me into deliverance. So the power of praying in tongues, it even, it, it, I'm trying to think of the best way to put it, but we exercise our power over demonic forces by praying in tongues. That is a real experience that I had that I didn't even know what tongues was at the time of my deliverance. But I know when the church was praying in this weird language that I now know to be tongues, that it, it totally overcome this demon on the inside of me. I ended up getting delivered of this demon. And then that ended up me going to Bible college and, and receiving the Holy Spirit and transforming my life. But this is a powerful, powerful weapon. And none of us, none of us who call ourselves disciples of the Lord Jesus should do without this. Because we're rejecting what God has offered to us. So I encourage you to receive this. And find other believers that have been filled with the Spirit, that speak with other tongues, and have them help you if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, and have them